Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. So today we're testing out Flight Simulator 2020 to uh, further uh, test my new i9-1400 KFCP, which I have overclocked to 5.8 GHz. Uh, MS Afterburner only shows it at 5,777 MHz. I don't know if that's like a bug or what, but it is at 5.8 GHz in Windows. But uh, we're going to go ahead and fly this Airbus A320 Neo to JFK from JFK Airport to New York City. And we're going to test out uh, frame per second and uh, also test uh, 4K and uh, 1440p resolutions. So let me very quickly show you the graphics settings very quickly. So we're at 3040 by 2160 by 4K 140Hz display. We are using NVIDIA DLSS Super Resolution set to quality mode. We are using NVIDIA frame generation and all the graphics settings are fully maxed out. Uh, terrain level de detail is normally at 100 but I have it at 150 and object level detail of that 158 normally is defaulted to uh, 100 but all these other uh, graphics options are fully maxed out uh, highest preset with everything uh, turned up all the way. So we'll do the interior cockpit view and exterior uh, view. There are some little uh, frame stutters in this title because it does use live uh, it pulls live data from the internet so it can vary uh, depending on how it runs but we'll try to uh, do a few different scenarios to uh, further uh, test things out. We'll try different resolutions. But first, we get towards uh, New York City, and then that's where the benchmarking will start. So, for the meantime, we'll just sort of cruise, check out the little visuals as I fly towards there. See one little start there. But that, that's expected because of how high resolution these uh, settings are set to, and also the live uh, frame uh, data. As I mentioned, so let me throw it off the edges just a little bit to get a little bit closer and faster to New York City, and uh, we'll see everything around. So enjoy, and I'll be quiet, and then uh, when I do change graphic settings, I will uh, mention it on video. Oh, beautiful visuals, as you can see. Now this is a heavily uh, reliant uh, game on the CPU single core, which is the main reason why I wanted to test this with my uh, new CPU to see how everything runs and looks. But so far the frame time gap looks pretty good. Of course there are going to be some dips as expected. And one thing worth mentioning is I am using a high resolution texture pack for New York City, so there are may maybe a few more jumps here and there because of that. And I don't know how to remove it. I tried to find out where those files were so I could remove it for the spent park, but I just don't even remember where those files were placed. So it was in some kind of like temporary file in the flight simulator. Uh, it's like a hidden uh, file folder, but. No biggies. We'll deal with it. We got frame generation on, so we'll, have, we'll use all the advantages that we have to make the game run uh, decently well. And we are using the live weather, so just to show you, uh, sorry, I'm a little bit rusty. Uh, to show you, we're using the live weather system. So this is as of October 28th, Saturday, and uh, yeah, so I just wanted to talk about that. That's why the clouds look pretty enormous. This is live weather right now for New York City. Okay, so this is where I want to start the benchmark. So we're at 100 frames per second, and we'll try to do the interior views also, which also uh, further stress the GPU. And we'll try to pay attention if there's any uh, stutters here and there. Try to wop a little bit here. I love hearing those engines uh, throttle up, it just sounds so, so awesome. I've always been in, into avi aviation, so it always gets me a little uh, nerdy, if you will, when I hear those uh, engines throttle up. It looks like we're maintaining around uh, 97 to 100 frames per second at 4K resolution. 
to the inside cockpit view a little bit, and then uh, we'll go to uh, 1440p resolution to put more stress on the CPU. But either way, this is using a lot of CPU power, because that's one thing that Flight Simulator does heavily rely on is the CPU power. Throttle up a little bit, and let's go to uh, 1440p resolution now. You have to usually apply and save two times on this. Alright, now we're at 1440. So this is going to put a little bit more stress on the CPU now. Now on my screen, at least my 4K display, uh, the actual visual fidelity does look a lot more blurry. Because I'm running on a native 4K screen. But looking at the frame, frame time graph, it looks like it's... Uh, Pretty smooth and steady, I'd say. Just little micro dips, but that's nothing that you'll see on while playing a game. CPU is getting a little bit warmer though, which obviously is being threaded more. Bravo Looks like it went up to 68C. And then just for fun, let's try uh, 1080p, and then uh, because that's such a lower resolution, we will uh, turn off super resolution. And then we'll also... Uh, I'm sorry, we'll turn off frame generation, what I meant to say. Apply. Because obviously you wouldn't need a uh, frame generation at 1080p. But the frames per second basically got cut in half though, as you can see. 47 frames per second. And then let me go back to 1440p here. Because I wanted to see how it performs without frame generation. Honestly, it's about the same, I'd say. 45 frames per second. One heat stutter there. Went down to 22. Got to throttle up some here. 500. 400. 300. Okay, and then now let's go back to 4K. Basically, I just wanted to test this without, without, without frame generation to compare how it runs. Keep changes. And then looks like 4K native. We're again at around 40 frames per second. Let me do one other thing here. So let's turn back on frame generation. And let's go to uh, DLAA mode. Oh, frame generation. I think I'll make sure I have frame generation still on. Yeah, it's on. Okay, apply. So this will basically give you the best actual visual fidelity. And also still good performance, and we're still maintaining well above 60 frames per second. But overall, I think the CPU did fine. I don't really, I really can't say if I saw any differences. I did make a video previous to this that I will uh, link up at the end of this video, so you can compare when I had my i9 1300K CPU at 5.7 gigahertz all quarter clock. So I guess that's going to be the only real reference point to see if there's any differences. Uh, to the results. But uh, if you did like the video, give it a like. 
If you want to see more content like this and more gaming videos, uh, feel free to subscribe. So feel free to subscribe. So thanks for watching. I appreciate all the support, and uh, stay tuned for more gaming videos. And I'll see you guys around. Peace out.